condylar plate fixation in the distal femur. For the fixation of fractures of the distal femur, we use the condylar plate. The fixed angle between the shaft of the plate and the blade measures 95 degrees. If the blade of the plate is inserted parallel to the knee joint axis, and if the site of entry of the blade in the lateral condyle is correctly chosen, the plate lies parallel to the lateral surface of the distal femur. The most important instrument for the introduction of the condylar plate is the seating chisel. Its U profile corresponds exactly to the blade of the plate. Its opening points towards the joint. With adequate length of the distal fragment, the direction for the seating chisel can be determined using the condylar guide. Automatically, the blade of the plate will become parallel to the knee joint. In intra-articular fractures and supracondylar comminution, we depend exclusively on the knee joint axis to determine the direction of the seating chisel. The initial anatomical reconstruction of the joint is a prerequisite for the insertion of the seating chisel parallel to the knee joint surface using K-wires as a guide. Deviation of the blade from the knee joint axis results in a varus deformity or a valgus deformity in the fracture. We have to avoid tilting the seating chisel in the direction of extension or flexion. For the most part, extension is a relatively common malalignment in the presence of a short condylar fragment. Only with accurate positioning of the seating chisel will the blade be parallel to the shaft. If the blade is inserted too far dorsally, alignment of the shaft to the plate results in a posterior displacement at the fracture site. Furthermore, it also brings along a medial displacement of the condyles. At the same time, we risk to penetrate the intercondylar fossa. Marking the site of entry for the seating chisel For our exercise, the plastic bone is fixed in the vise in such a way that the medial condyle rests on the table. We now mark the site of entry in the lateral condyle. This is situated on a line 15 millimeters from the most inferior point of the condyle and 10 millimeters back from the anterior edge. With the entry site located at this place, the plate will come to lie against the shaft. An equally good method to define the site of entry is to divide the longest sagittal diameter of the condyle in an anterior and a posterior half. The window is located in the middle of the anterior half and again 15 millimeters proximal to the articulation. This method is particularly helpful in short condylar fragments. With the window parallel to the longest sagittal condylar diameter, extension or flexion deformities can be avoided. the insertion of Kirchner wires. An articular fracture is reduced first. The position of Kirchner wires is normally secured by their purchase in the soft tissues, imitated by the foam rubber model. The first red wire represents the horizontal plane of the knee joint. It touches the cartilage on the lateral and medial condyle. The second blue wire bridges the patellar groove cartilage damage has to be avoided.
A third yellow wire is inserted immediately distal to the window. On the plastic model, pre-drilling with the two millimeter drill bit is necessary. This K wire combines the directions of the first two wires. Surgeon and assistant make sure that the wires in both planes are parallel, as demonstrated here. The two first wires, red and blue, are now removed. intercondylar lag screw fixation. Now the intercondylar lag screws are inserted proximally to the entry site of the plate. The dorsal cancellous screw enters immediately proximally and dorsally to the insertion of the fibular collateral ligament and the popliteus tendon, here marked in blue and red. With soft bone, a washer can be used. The anterior lag screw has to respect the inclination of the patellofemoral joint, which means that the two screws can converge on each other. We now remove the foam rubber for better control while inserting the lag screws and the seating chisel. Drilling with the 3.2 drill bit. depth gauge. Cancel this tapping for the first three or four turns. Insertion of the screws. Drilling with the 3.2 drill bit. Depth gauge. Cancel this tapping for the first three or four turns. Insertion of the screws. Care has to be taken that the screws do not interfere with the blade of the plate. Preparing the channel and insertion of the seating chisel. To open the prepared cortical window, three holes with the 4.5 drill bit are made. These are united with the router. The proximal edge of the window is beveled to receive the shoulder of the plate. Omission of this step might result in a fissure line starting at the window. If the bone is very hard, the channel for the seating chisel has to be deepened further with the 4.5 drill bit parallel to the Kirchner wire, at least across the fracture line to avoid redisplacement of the fracture. On the plastic bone, pre-drilling is absolutely recommended. The blade channel is now completed with the seating chisel. To prevent a flexion or extension deformity, we use the chisel guide, the flap of which has to remain parallel to the femoral shaft. Under guidance with the slotted hammer, the seating chisel is slowly hammered into the bone, exactly parallel to the Kirchner wire. Its direction is continuously controlled in both planes. In practice, the assistant applies counter-pressure against the medial condyle.
The length of the side plate and the blade has been predetermined on the preoperative x-ray using the transparent template. As a rule, the blade must be 15 to 20 millimeters shorter than the transverse diameter of the condyles since the radiologically apparent AP diameter represents their wide posterior portion while the blade lies in the narrower anterior part. Now the seating chisel is removed. The Kirchner wire remains in place and serves as a control when inserting the appropriate plate. For safety reasons, we check the depth with the depth gauge. Fixation of the selected plate in the plate holder with the blade in line with the handle. The insertion of the blade is first done by hand to feel for the direction of the channel, then by hammer. Once the distance between the plate and the bone measures one centimeter, the plate holder is removed. And the plate is further advanced with the impactor until it lies flush against the bone. Additional fixation of the plate to the distal fragment is accomplished with two cancellous screws. It is only now that reduction against the shaft fragment is performed using a reduction clamp. Once the reduction is satisfactory, the tension device is applied and the